So this Knife Thoughts video is going to be the part three of what was originally intended as a one video series uh, of a full collection overview update. Um, I ended up taking longer and having to stop filming than I expected on the fixed blades and moderns. And then I intended it to be a two part series uh, with the non GEC traditionals and the GECs being the second part, but the non GEC traditionals ended up being a pretty solid chunk of a video itself. Uh, so this is gonna be part three with the gradation cutlery traditionals. So uh, thank you to those of you who've already watched part one and part two. Um, I'm guessing some of you have been waiting for this one with the gradation cutlery, so here it comes. Lots of gradation cutlery knives. I hope you enjoy. All right, so the first gradation cutlery knife that I have here um, is this one. This is the only one that I don't have the tube for currently, but this is a 56 dog leg in antique weave jig bone, I believe. Um, I'm kind of forgetting now. It's harder to rem remember because I don't have the tube, but... This is another one that uh, was sent to me from Northern Knives, and uh, it's a really cool one. It's from the older run of dog legs. So where is it? it must be on the other side of the blade here. So uh, you can see from Gradation Cutlery's tank stamp system that this was uh, made in 2010. So it has the clip point blade versus the newer run that has the spear point. Really nice action, nicer than either of my newer uh, 56s that I've had. Um, it has the clip. And then, as I guess you already saw, a pen blade um, came to me used with patina and stuff, but I've polished it up a little bit. And a, a nice knife um, and goes kind of along in a little collection I have of small and big versions. So Gradation Cutlery has done small and big versions of the dog leg, of um, the Coke bottle, the, uh, and the gun stock. Uh, so you'll see those here. But I'm just going to go through these at pretty much random, starting with my carry Gradation Cutlery knives, the knives that I carry moving to ones that I don't carry. Um, so this is the first one, I just went with this one first, like I say, because I don't have the tube for it. Moving into ones that I do have the tube for, uh, again, not really in any order here. We'll go, actually, just by luck, it is the smaller dog leg. So this is the um, number 182216 Beagle in oil sucker rod wood. Um, so I've got the, pin with that one right there uh, and this is one that I'm, I really like because I really like this wood so this oil sucker rod wood is from um, a tube or not a tube but a rod that would uh, go down the oil well to, to suck the oil back up out and uh, it's from salvage from from actual used ones of those from the area around Titusville where creation cutlery uh, is and, and makes their knives where uh, the oil industry was born in, in the United States. Some people say that, that um, they were purposely drilling for oil in uh, China before then, but um, you know, it definitely was the first oil well in, in America. Um, so it's really cool. It has this kind of green tint because of that. Uh, not super sure what kind of wood it is. A lot of people say that it's likely ash, um, but this has a nice little pen blade and then a little coping or sheep foot. Really cool little knife, kind of like a peanut, and um, really easy to carry one that I enjoy a lot. Moving right along, we have another random grab here. This is a number 78 American Jack in the Good as Gold series, which is the Glitter Gold Acrylic. It's a one of eight. I thought that it was a one of six. I think they actually wrote six and then rewrote the eight. Um, but uh, it's, uh, it says 17, but it's actually from the 2018 Rendezvous, uh, I think. Let's see. I'm pretty sure the 2018 Rendezvous. Boy, I know, but I'm forgetting, but I'm pretty sure it's 2018 Rendezvous. Um, so it is a special factory assembly, and this is the first time they were using that nomenclature rather than parts knives. Uh, I actually just did an article on knifethoughts.com on what a special factory assembly uh, or a parts knife knife is. So definitely go to knifethoughts.com and check out that article for more info. But this is it. And a lot of people don't like this glitter gold because it's kind of garish. But as I've said several times already in this video, uh, other videos, um, I like, you know, garish, sparkly, you know, abalone knives. Uh, this one has a really nice action, um, really great action. Some of the best uh, I've had on any knife um, and, you know, GEC certainly. Uh, and 
Uh, it's one I use, like I say, really nice long spear, kind of um, classic spear shape and you know, good action and one I'm really happy to have gotten. I don't think a lot of people use the parse knives or, you know, because they're usually uh, rare. Um, people often don't, not all the time, certainly other people also use them, but um, I used that one to cut up an avocado for my lunch at the rendezvous. Uh, so that was, you know, I think people were surprised. But anyway, here's another knife from a rendezvous. This one's from this year's rendezvous. This is a number 933119 smooth white bone, real lamb foot. This is a Charlie Campania SFO. Um, he had these knives made, and as far as people can tell, it's the first time that an American manufacturer has made the lamb foot. I'm going to be doing an article on this knife and what the difference between a lamb foot and, you know, what GEC called recently the ram foot, which you'll see one of those also, or a sheep foot is. Um, so definitely, you know, like I say, subscribe to knifethoughts.com via email and you'll get an, uh, an email when I post that article. But it's a really cool knife. Um, another one that, that's pretty rare, they, Charlie said they made 20, Bill made 27 of these for him. Here's the classic write-up. Charlie always has a write-up on the back of his tubes, so you can pause this and read that. Um, but Charlie said he, uh, Bill only made 27 of them for him, and Bill has been doing that the past two, maybe three years, making, actually, he's been making knives for Charlie for At The Rendezvous for a long time, but um, last year he did a, a TC Ancient Barlow in Smooth White Bone, and this year he did this one in Smooth White Bone. Um, so kind of a little bit of a theme going, but he's been making special knives for Charlie at the Rendezvous, or to give him at the Rendezvous for a while, and I've gotten a good number of them. I got a um, the only TC Barlow with a bottle opener that's ever been made or ever will be made. I think they made either three or five of them and I got one of them. I don't have it anymore. But anyway, there's a lot of cool knives that you can get at the rendezvous that aren't the rendezvous specials or even the parts knives. So um, this one's a really cool one, one I've been really enjoying. And one note here, um, you see that little uh, nail nick relief. So I put that in because as you can see, the nail nick sits really low, but I made it so that you, you know, when you're looking at it straight on, you can't see that. It just helps out a little bit to get your thumbnail in there. Um, so, you know, I don't know if that's a traditional thing on a lamb foot. I actually asked Charlie about it. He said lamb foots are not pinchable. So, you know, not to put, it wouldn't be traditional to put an easy open, but this would be fine. So I went ahead with it and I really enjoy it. Cool knife, um, a lot of people really like the 93s and in particular these lamb foot knives. Uh, moving on here to another one from this year. Oh, this is not from this year's rendezvous. Another one of Charlie's Special Factory orders. This is the number 981416 Texas Camp Knife. And here is the write-up. You can pause it and read that if you'd like. And um, it's in Cranberry Jig Bone. I actually had another a white bone version of the Texas uh, camp knife and meant to keep it to not use it, but um, I ended up getting rid of it. Wish I had kept it. These are pretty um, sought after and uh, I would like to have one that's not used, but I, I just tend to really like, I like Charlie's SFOs and I tend to use them, even though <laughs> I think if I kept them, they'd be worth a lot more, but or I kept them nice, but I, I do intend to keep them, you know, forever, not sell them. So doesn't really matter how much they're worth in money. Uh, especially this one because I did get my initials engraved on there and I think that looks really nice with this big um, federal shield is what I believe this is called. Uh, so there's the pin. So this knife is really cool. It's kind of uh, unique for GEC. GEC hasn't done a scout knife other than this knife. Um, so it's two springs, big, hefty, you know, very long, thick knife uh, and it has a clip point main, nice big clip point. Um, and I believe, but I'm not 100% sure, that that's the same blade that's on the 97 that they did recently. Then it has a sheep foot, nice hefty sheep foot. It has an awl, which I really like. Um, I actually bent the tip real bad on this awl and had to regrind it, but it still works really well. Um, so I really enjoy that awl. And it has one of the best can opener, bottle opener combinations I've ever seen or ever used. Um, so you can certainly use this to open cans. I've opened lots and lots of cans with it, and you can open it to use it to open bottles also, and it works really well for that. So I really like this. Um, Randy at GEC, the engineer there, told me that this was kind of a difficult one to design, and I think they did a really, really good job of it. So I really like the Texas Camp Knife. Moving right along. Uh, let's go with the 97 next. 
since I talked about that. So here it is. This is the Northfield number 976119 in amber jig bone 23. These are all serialized. And this is a Kiefer uh, Cutlery Classics knife. Um, so Gary Kiefer, he goes to the rendezvous every year. He's always first in line um, to, to get the, the knives. And I've gotten to talk to him quite a bit. Um, because you stay there all night, you know, or I do on Thursday nights anyway. Um, and he's very knowledgeable about, you know, vintage knives and stuff. And he's, uh, ha is a dealer now for Gradation Cutlery, um, cutleryclassics.com. He actually gave this to, and this one to me at the rendezvous. Uh, I didn't have a 97 to use. I do have another one, but I don't use it. Um, and I was really happy to get it because I wanted to use one of these. So this has his shield, which is different than um, the normal propeller shield that GAC uses and uh, trademarked by him, uh, trademarked or copyrighted or maybe both. Um, but uh, so it's only on his knives. And I actually really like the jigging on this. It's, it's, um, it's actually kind of grippy. Uh, so it provides a little bit of grip and it is wearing in nicely, really nice action. Some people complained about these 97s having too light of an action, but I like it, I think it's nice. It doesn't close on you when you're using it, even though it's you know not a super strong pull. Uh, but has this cool saber grind. You can see I've used this one a lot uh, since the rendezvous. I dropped it off, well actually I didn't drop it, but it was dropped off of a, a fishing dock and kind of stabbed into some mud, so it's got some scratches, but um, nice knife. I'm gonna be doing uh, a full article on this one also, so definitely check that out, knifethoughts.com. Definitely a big knife like the 98. Uh, so, you know, some people find it too big for carry, but I don't generally. Um, <clears throat> moving on to another long knife, but not quite as big. This is a 652111 EC black gold. I don't really remember what the EC stands for, um, but this is actually a parts knife from either 2012 or 2013, um, and they didn't make too many of them. It's it's not an S model, so uh, S model is another thing I have an article about, um, or I'm planning to make an article. I don't even remember if I did it already or not. Uh, but this is not an S, but the funny thing was my dad got this for me, you know, in, I think in 2013 at the factory and, um, they actually had these same knives as parts knives, but they were S models at this year's rendezvous. Uh, so that's kind of cool to see. This knife has had, um, blade wrap quite a bit, uh, in the time that I've had it. And that's just because it's such a, a long blade and it's a thin handle and the tip from sharpening has risen up. So I've had to drop the kick a little bit, but um, really nice knife. One that again, I've, I've used quite a bit and uh, I'm happy to have gotten as a gift uh, from my dad. <coughs> Moving on, drop that one. Moving on to the number 130217 in smooth ivory bone. This is the office knife. So this is on the 13 frame. They did a bunch of different versions of this knife. Actually, quite a few different versions of it. Um, but this one is what, on the other handle materials that weren't the office knife, they called the clerk. So it has a long Warncliffe. Um, this is not really what it looked like initially. Um, I sharpened this a lot because it had some blade wraps. Uh, Congress's, uh, as I've talked about on a Rough Rider in the previous, uh, previously in this series, um, I think it kind of part of the design is that the tips are going to be close. So you're going to have to file the kick down when the tip rises up above the frame if that bothers you, which it does me. Um, and then it also has, this came with this, so I didn't add this um, nail nick notch. Uh, it came with it. And it has a pen blade. Again, sharpened quite a bit. Uh, but nice little knife, real easy to carry, and it would make a really great office knife. This is laser etched, so you can kind of see the, um, you know, it's it's more of a dot, like pointillism almost. Uh, sorry about the cuts on my thumb here, but um, so it's pretty cool. There's been a lot of office knives, uh, knives throughout history. So it's, you know, one of those. I actually had a Queen or Shat and Morgan, I guess, office knife, planning to get another one. Really, really nice. Uh, and I am planning to get another one to make a little matching set, but I don't have it now. Moving on to, this one. So this is a fun one. Uh, this is the number 351217 in green banana bone. 
So these, uh, GEC has done a bunch of different banana bones. They have their banana shield. Uh, so I'm thinking that this was the first time that they used the banana shield, but they've used it since then um, on the rotten banana bone number 85s. Uh, mine isn't very green. It's more yellow with a little bit of white, but it's a really cool knife, really nice action on this one. Um, this nice classic clip point. And I like pen style knives, so a single, single spring two blade with a pen or a spear and a sheep foot or Warren Cliff uh, or even coping. So this is a, a really thin um, sheep foot blade. One of the thinnest blades from Gradation Cutler I've seen, which I really like. It's a small knife, so it's not you know a small blade. So it's not um, made for uh, you know hard use or anything. So the thinness is good because it helps with you know um, you know slicing. So I really like this one. Nice action and a fun one because of that banana shield. I, I like the unique shields that GEC um, does and has done in the past. And um, speaking of that, let's grab this one. So this is the original ram foot from the uh, 93 run, same as the lamb foot. So number 93, 3119, an antique autumn jig bone. Um, and the cool thing about this one, I actually had one of these, got rid of it because I didn't really think I needed it and I uh, bought a lot of knives at the rendezvous and then um, a dealer got more so I got another one, is this shield. So it's a really cool um, ram's head shield looks like it's about the charge you can see it almost kind of looks uh, angry there so i think that's really cool and then it has the ram foot blade which again i'll post an article about that um and uh the the original ram foot etch now this one i have to say there's there's a little you know spot of etch that shouldn't be there the uh edge grind isn't like super great. I mean, GC often doesn't have the greatest edge grinds compared to modern knives, but it's not super great. Um, but otherwise, it's a nice knife. Uh, and I've been thinking about making a little collection of like barnyard shields so that they've done the ram's head, they've done North American cattle bone, which has a, you know, a cow head shield. And then they've done um, the beaver, uh, which I'd like to get an 85 a beaver tail, but I just haven't yet and then they have they did do a donkey shield a while back on a knife called the cracker jack i think um i don't know that much about that one but i'm gonna maybe get one we'll see uh it's this you know th this collection overview this is something i should mention it's just a snapshot right um a lot of these knives i'm going to keep pretty much forever because i've used them and so you know selling them wouldn't make that much sense and or you know i just really like them or they have meaning being from the rendezvous or something uh, like this one does i'll explain um but you know there's always ins and outs right so you know this could change next week some of these knives uh, but this is a 715118 in orange dowrin so it's the bull nose and the farm and field tool line um, and this one was actually a gift i had mentioned i was going to do an article on this these knives i'm going to do a series of of articles on uh, working knives from around the world, which I mentioned, you know, in, in the other parts of, of this series. Uh, but this is Gradish and Cutlery's sodbuster pattern. And this one was actually a, a gift. I had mentioned that to Ken uh, Mundek of Blue Creek Cutlery. Um, and he actually sent this one to me as, as he said to consider it a wedding gift. So that was really, really cool. Um, really nice of him. Uh, I was very fortunate. Um, got a, you know, like you've seen a couple knives. Uh, given to me relatively recent this year. Uh, so really happy about that. This one has been used a lot also since I've had it in the couple months I've had it. I carried this on my honeymoon and used it quite a bit then. And uh, from that, cleaning it up and stuff, I've pretty much uh, scotch brighted the edge off by, actually not even purposely, but just using um, like Brillo pads uh, to clean it in the sink. And it has kind of gotten its own hand satin finish. Um, so really classic. This is one of the best knives to get if you're, you know, trying to get a Gration Cutler at a uh, cheaper price. They're 60-ish dollars um, and really, really well made. Just a little, you know, thicker than, just like other Sodbusters, thicker than a typical GAC. Maybe not quite as uh, high of a fit and finish, but by all means, just as, as well constructed um, for a user. Um, so really, really nice knife. Uh, one that I like to use and carry. So that's a good one. And again, I always appreciate those uh, gifted knives. 
Um, moving on to this one. So this is a number 221214 ECLP. Uh, again, I don't really know. Maybe that means limited production. I don't know. Um, but this is the 22 Magnum, which is the smaller gun stock. I had one of these in Ebony. Really, really liked it. And in one of my fits of selling, which I've had throughout my time uh, collecting, I sold it. I had actually made the pen blade into a little um, sheet foot or coping blade. I didn't do it on this one, but, and then I got this one uh, on Instagram. So really cool little knife. Uh, this is the smallest frame that GEC has used so far. Uh, so really small little knife, extremely easy to carry in your watch pocket. And this is kind of what GEC has called in a per, uh, perillic. They don't call it that on this, but other knives with this type handle where there's pieces of acrylic in there, they have called a perillic. Um, but very nice little knife, nice action. Um, I did have to kind of pinch down and glue the acrylic, but other than that, very, very nice. And a cool little knife. I like to throw this one in the watch pocket and carry the bigger version of the gun stock, the 44, you know, in my back pocket, which I will try to grab that one next. So here it is, the number 44 Buffalo Jack. Number 441218 in Cocobolo or Cocobolo. I never say that right. I don't really care that much how I say it. But so the thing that I liked about this one is the, you know, the bullet shield. I mentioned that I like the, the Remingtons with the bullet shields, and uh, I really like this one. Um, I think that they're going to probably do pretty soon or relatively soon a run of the 22s with the bullet shield. Um, but I don't know when, and I don't know for sure. I just think that. Um, so if you want a 22, you know, keep that in mind. Uh, this one is one that I've also used quite a bit. I have, you know, shined it up a little bit since then, but uh, very nice knife, classic kind of long clip point. And then for the size of this knife, for the it's about three and a half inches, maybe a little bit longer closed, has a pretty solid uh, spear point, uh, or I'm sorry, pen blade uh, in length there. Um, so I did drop the kicks on this a little bit. Um, and actually this is one that I, sent to GEC for warranty. The pen blade was off-centered when I got it enough that it was bothering me. So I tried to straighten it myself and stupidly snapped it. Um, and GEC, you know, replaced it for I think 20 or $25. Uh, so I thought that was pretty fair um, to replace a blade that I broke just of stupidness um, for that. But I, I don't necessarily think that that's the norm. Um, I think if you break a blade you know, by trying to modify it, it wouldn't at all be out of bounds for them to say that they wouldn't fix it. But, um, you know, I was thankful that they did. I actually took it to the rendezvous, I think last year. Um, yeah, it must've been last year. Uh, and they fixed it real quick. So again, really great service from GEC. Not that that is what they would always do or whatever. Um, don't try to you know, if your blade's off center, just send it to them. Don't try to fix it yourself. That's actually what Chris Tucker said to me when I showed it to her. Um, but anyway, let's move on to this one. This is the number 060119. So this is the Pemberton from the most recent run this year. I got this one because I wanted the small version of the Coke bottle. Um, they actually haven't made, so you've noticed on those other sets that they made a, a small version, about two and a half inches, and a bigger version at about three and a half inches. They actually haven't made a three and a half inch Coke bottle. Uh, the 97 that I showed earlier is a Coke bottle, and then the next knife I'm going to show is also a Coke bottle, but neither of them are three and a half inches. They're, they're quite a bit bigger. Um, so not exactly fitting in with the rest of the set, um, but this is one that I, I've, you know, used some. Uh, not, not a whole, whole lot, probably not as much as the others that I've shown so far, but, um, uh, a nice little knife. I like the smooth white bone. I like this bad shield and well-made nice little Warren cliff there. Definitely a great watch pocket knife to just, you know, open boxes, open mail and stuff like that. So, uh, we'll move on to the next Coke bottle frame knife. This is another one that was a parts knife. So they actually made, a, I think, a good number of these. I don't know how many, but uh, for the, I think, 2016 Rendezvous. Um, but this is a number 452212EC. Um, I'm starting to wonder if the EC has something to do. I don't know what it means, so I'm not going to conjecture, you know, conjecture or conjecture about it here during this video. But this is another large Coke bottle. 
This one is one I did have some trouble with this. The pivot got kind of gritty, sent it in and, and GEC, you know, pretty much fixed it up and it's it's been good since then. Um, but the thing I like about this is one, it's uh, the same frame as the Whaler, uh, I believe but the Whaler's main blade comes out on the larger end, but it's a little easier to carry for me because uh, of you know the blade coming out on this end and how the blades sit and stuff. But it still has this really, really kind of ridiculously wide, tall blade, um, but it comes to a nice thin edge because it is so tall, so it's a pretty usable blade. And then the other thing I like is um, this uh, secondary clip point. So this is like a full size clip point on most knives, but it's the secondary here. And it's a pretty cool little little clip point um, secondary. I guess not little, but look how thick that spring is for the main blade. Um, so pretty stout knife. And uh, I, I like small knives, but I also like these big knives too. And I also do like this uh, Pioneer muscle bone. I actually didn't get this at the rendezvous. I called like a couple days later and asked if they still had any. They, they sometimes do. I heard the same thing happened. Uh, some people were able to get some of the parts knives from the factory after the rendezvous this year. Um, so something to be aware of. And uh, another cool knife. Moving on to another parts knife. So this is a uh, parts knife from this year, the 2019 rendezvous, but it's a 745116. They made a lot of these uh, 74s in 2016, so they had a lot of parts left over. Um, and this is in natural smooth white bone and it's one of 13. The reason I got this is because I have another 74 in, uh, in stainless, so this is a stainless knife, but I don't carry it because it's one of the rendezvous specials. Uh, so I got this to carry and use, but I actually haven't really used it yet. I've carried a little bit, I did sharpen it, but I haven't used it yet. Uh, so I don't really know why, I'm kind of surprised by that, that I have, you know, I keep like putting it in my pocket, but using other knives. I don't know why that is, but it's a really cool knife Pretty light pull, but um, really nice action. Their stainless knives tend to have nice action. Um, so, you know, they don't make as many stainless, so I was happy to get this. And they did make, um, I think, uh, several, if not most of the 13 were S models. Uh, so I made sure to get a non-S model and uh, really happy with it. It's a very nice knife and this is one of those ones where I really intended to, to use it and keep it, but uh, kind of wishy-washy about it at this point. But another special special factory assembly and a, a really cool one. Um, so let's move on. Let's move on to another one that I have uh, modified a little bit. This is a number 828218. Uh, possum skinner, I guess it doesn't say it there, but in natural canvas micarta. So this one is a knife that I was excited for. I had the 82 Dixie stock knife from the previous run in um, Indian paintbrush jig bone. Uh, I actually had one, sold it, bought a different one. Then when I got these ones from this run, I sold that one. Um, I really like that uh, Indian paintbrush jig bone, so uh, not super sure that that was the best choice, but um, they made on this second run of these knives in 2018, this version, which is the Possum Skinner. So rather than a Stockman with two springs, this is a single spring pen style knife, again, with a clip point. This is a long like Turkish style clip point, and then a Warncliffe. So a really, really useful blade shape combination. Um, and with the natural micarta, makes for a really good using knife. So I really enjoy this one. And you can see I added these um, nail nick notches. These ones, obviously are not the kind where you can't see it from the side you can see them both very well and i did that because the you know the nail necks do sit pretty low at least on the clip point and since it's a user i wasn't going to sell it i just wanted to make it as easy to use as possible so this makes it really easy to get your thumb in there you mean you can really get it in open that uh both blades really easily um so really cool uh good using knife and i'm also considering getting this engraved like I did the Texas camp knife, but I just haven't gotten it, gotten to it yet. Um, also, I thought I'd mention, uh, if you're seeing like water, what looks like liquid on the, on the knives, that's just mineral oil. Um, I oil them up every now and then and uh, it keeps them in good shape and everything. So I'm going to do this one next. This is from the very recent run of 29 Stockyard Whittlers. 
Uh, this one is a 291319 in grits with butter and molasses acrylic. I wasn't, when I, when they first announced these 29s, I wasn't that interested because I thought that a three spring knife would be, you know, really thick uh, and heavy. But it's really not that thick and heavy because it doesn't have liners between the springs. Um, so they fit a lot of blade in here. Uh, these nail nicks also sit really low. So I actually did the same thing. You can see I, I put a little, um, you know, relief in there, but again, you can't see it from the side. So it just helps to get in there. And, and the blades are easy to open. Um, same deal on the back here for the awl. So you can see there's a, um, oh, pulling that the wrong direction. Uh, there's a sheep foot, nice long sheep foot. And then there's an awl. And the other reason I wasn't super into it was on the, the rendering that GEC had of this knife, these secondary blades didn't look that long. And being that it's a three spring, I didn't know why they weren't long, but you can see here that they are, you know, they take up pretty much the whole blade well. So they did pack as much blade into it as possible. And then the main blade is a nice classic clip point. Um, so nice knife, uh, nice combination of blades feels pretty good in the hand i did actually uh, some whittling on this with this knife and um it was pretty comfortable these tangs uh i probably will grind this edge down um right right there a little bit because they, they were a little you know sharp in the hand when i was whittling and stuff but uh nice knife um and I uh, really like these acrylic handles. They had a lot of nice ones on this run that they did recently. I especially like the um, Coffee House Acrylic from C. Reisner Cut Cutlery, traditionalpocketknives.com. Uh, and I also like the Mare and Garage, which were, uh, instead of an all, they had a spay blade. So this is, I think, my oldest gradation cutlery knife. This is a, a gradation cutlery brand um, because it's a stainless, but you can see this is before they were doing the stickers there. Um, it's a number 53, which is the Cuban pattern, uh, 8308. So made in 2008 in burnt stag. Um, and one of the interesting things about this is because it was the Cuban, it comes with this kind of cigar style wrapper. Uh, so that's a cool little detail. GEC always, you know, tends to do these, those cool little details, which is nice. Um, this is also before they stopped doing, um, shields on stag. And one thing, this shield actually is, is loose, but I, I'm, I don't care about it because all it does is show that it is worthwhile to pin a shield. Um, because this shield is pinned, it can be loose and it's not going to fall out. So I really appreciate that GAC pins their shields. This has a nice blade shape combination. Again, a um, nice long uh, Turkish clip point or, or long clip point. Um, this one doesn't have half stops. So, you know, all the way open cam tang, as they say. Um, and then it has a sheep foot, boom, classic sheep foot. And it has a spade blade. The spade blade sits really low, so I actually added this this nail notch. As you can see, you can see it from the side, but because it's on you know the the pile side, it doesn't matter as much to me. Um, makes it a lot easier to open, so it's worthwhile. Uh, the stag on this is pretty nice. It's it's pretty flat, so it makes it easier to carry for the size. Um, not as knobbly or gnarly as I tend to prefer on stag, but this one came up on blade forms, and I decided to get it. So. Cool old knife. Um, nice to have a stainless stockman from, from GEC. Um, I don't carry this knife, so I was going to show it later. Um, but I'll show it now just because it fits with that last one more. This is another 82 from the recent run. 828318. So this is the, the three-blade stockman version. Dixie stock knife. This is one of my wife's hairs. Um, they're everywhere. But uh, <laughs> um, this has some of the best stag in my opinion, I've ever seen. I think it just looks really nice. Now, it's not super knobbly, like I say, but it's just matched really well. You can see it has this kind of protruding line on both sides. I actually called um, Grady's Cutler and talked to Bill and said how much I liked it. And he said he puts a lot of time into matching the stack. So really appreciate that. Again, this is one that I haven't really used. I have carried it a little, I've sharpened it, but I haven't used it too much. Um, some people thought these had too light of pulls. Again, I don't mind it as long as it, you know, snaps open and closed, which as you can see, this does. Um, I don't mind. The uh, This comes, the 82s, 
come with this, uh, Dixie Stockman's come with this little cutout for the, the drop point. So the interesting thing about this is it does have a Turkish clip point, which is not super traditional on a Stockman, but a lot do have that. But it's not very traditional to have a, a worn clip rather than a sheet foot and a drop point rather than a spade blade. Um, but I appreciate it. I think it's a really nice blade shape combination and just a really nice knife. I, I just, again, haven't brought myself to use it too much yet, um, but a nice one either way. Um, moving on to, I think, my last user. Uh, well, the last one that I use currently, I have used some of the Rendezvous not specials that I'm gonna show. Um, but this is uh, the first GEC knife I got. I saw this on Blade Forums. I, I can't find him. I don't know if he's still on Blade Forums. Uh, his um, username was Eshwabok, I think. Something, I don't know if that's how it's pronounced, but um, I remember that because I really <laughs> appreciate that he posted uh, this knife in the um, like what you're carrying thread. And um, I was like, wow, that's a great looking knife. I asked him what it was, found out that it was made in Pennsylvania. And that's kind of how I got where I'm at. So um, I'm thankful that, that kind of his post got me into Grady's Cutlery, although I've spent lots of money on it and stuff. But this is a number 153113 uh, steel, which means that's steel liners instead of brass. Um, TC Barlow and Smooth Ivory Bone. So another Charlie Campania SFO. Um, this one, again, you can read this, really, really nice. Um, I mean, I was hooked when I got this, uh, but you can see that it's not in smooth ivory bone anymore. I had this knife for a long time. I used it a lot. The blade has been, you know, sharpened down quite a bit and it's a great knife. I It was just beat up and I saw a lot of people talking um, on um, blade forums about doing it uh, green tea bath on a knife and making it look better. I tried that and it looked, in my opinion, terrible. Now, I'm not saying that they always look terrible, just that I didn't do it right or it just didn't look good on this knife or whatever. So I ended up dying it black because I just couldn't stand how it looked with the green tea bath. Um, but I think the black looks nice. It's classy um, and it's the only black bone TC in the world as far as I know. So that's always cool. But one that I've used a whole, whole lot and um, again, one that will definitely, for sure, never leave my collection. Um, so that's the last of my current users. Uh, I have another non... Well, this one, you know, I don't know if I'm going to use it, but this is one that I that I haven't used yet, similar to the, um, you know, the Smooth White Bone 74 and the Stag uh, 82 stock knife that I just showed you. But this is a number 153216. CL, which means cap lifter in beer barrel oak. So this is the one of the beer scout knives. I actually got this one at this year's rendezvous from Charlie. Uh, I'd been wanting one because when they first came out, I was like, eh, you know, I already have a sheep foot uh, 15, but I realized, you know, it's unique and it's unique because they're not going to use this beer scout name anymore. Now that doesn't mean they're not going to make knives with cap lifters, just they're not going to use this beer scout name. And I posted on Instagram about why that is. So uh, you know, check out my Instagram at Knife Thoughts. But um, the Beer Scout is uh, a number 15. Whoops. It's a number 15 with a sheep foot blade. Has the Beer Scout etch. Lots of mineral oil on this one. Uh, and then it has the Beer Scout knife shield. This one's in beer barrel oak wood and then the big difference here the thing that makes everybody want them is the screwdriver and cap lifter so a cool little knife definitely a nice user i got a scout uh which is it just doesn't have the beer scout branding for my brother um because he wanted one with a cap lifter and, and knife bright acrylic um but uh yeah definitely a nice one and because they won't make them anymore they're pretty sought after at this point despite the fact that they actually made a lot of them um, so another interesting one that I just haven't used yet. And moving on to my non-users. So I'm going to start out with the Allegheny Mountain Knife Collectors Association Club Knives. So I joined the Allegheny Mountain Knife Collectors Association in early 2018. And this is the first of their knives I got. It's a number 462218 Whaler in ALVS Abalone. So earlier in this series, I showed a... Um, a queen in abalone and 
Um, it's a non-user. I'll, I'll maybe I'll compare it to this just real quick. But this is a whaler, so it's a a big old knife for sure. Um, in abalone, and this is beautiful, beautiful abalone. This was not a, an expensive knife for the big piece of abalone that it is. Um, so I was happy to get it. Rather than their normal shield, it just has this with the AMKCA, which I actually like. Um, I'll talk about why on the next knife, but really beautiful abalone. And the ALVS means it's a looking glass. You can't see it super well here because I can't hold it up to the light and show you, but it's just a sheet of abalone with acrylic over it, which makes sense for such a big knife. But you can see that it has the AMKCA uh, etch 2018 and then uh, this is number 10 out of 20 and then it has the pen blade i don't know that i need to open that um but uh beautiful abalone on both sides and just a really cool unique knife one that i'm happy to have i just don't use it because i mean they're not super easy to carry and i just kind of haven't brought myself to carrying it yet um but we'll move on get these out of frame running out of space to put these here. Um, move on to the next Allegheny Mountain Knife Club club knife or collector's association. This is the 2019, uh, they made 25 this year and this is the number 97, 6119, um, Allegheny pattern and autumn gold jig bone. So I wrote an article on this knife. Uh, there was kind of a lot of confusion leading up to getting it as to what it was. First, it was going to be stag, then it was going to be smooth yellow bone, then jig yellow bone, but I think that was just a misunderstanding. Or maybe they just, you know, switched, GEC switched it to the autumn gold, but it didn't end up being that. Um, I have an article on it, so you can check that out online uh, at knifethoughts.com. Um, but this is number six, so I'll get this one out. There's the shield. I don't remember if there was a shield with the 2018 or not, but. Um, there's the shield for this one. Or, I'm sorry, not shield, pin. Um, I was thinking about the shield, uh, the, the pin. And I heard from Darren Oral, who I mentioned earlier in the series, that they won't be doing the shield, the pins as much anymore. Now, I don't, I don't know if that that's the case, but I wouldn't be surprised. I didn't realize. Apparently, they make them in house, which is a surprise to me. But I was actually, despite not really having you know, a great idea of what it was gonna look like. I was actually really happy with how this looks. I think this autumn gold, is that what it is? Autumn gold jig bone is really nice looking actually. I, I like the kind of caramel color that it has. I like the wide kind of thick jigging that it has. And it has that same really nice um, saber ground blade and the AMKCA etch on there. Now the thing is, this shield is not pinned. Um, and this shield isn't a GEC shield, it's supplied to GEC by the club. Um, this is kind of the club insignia here, this, this bear, and it's very similar to the um, Cripple Creek, or, um, well, I'm forgetting his name now, but a, a custom or a mid-tech kind of slip joint maker's shield, uh, uh, the, the three-legged buffalo that is on the Cripple Creek now, uh, that Smoky Mountain Knife Works now owns that brand. Um, but it's a similar shield, and they don't have pins and uh, AMKCA sent them to uh, GEC and so because they don't come with pins, it's not pinned. Um, I really dislike that. I actually, one of the members showed me an older uh, GEC made club knife with this shield that had fallen out. It actually fell out while I was there. Um, so that's why I don't like non-pin shields or glued shields. They, they can fall out and you know that's, that's no good. Now I could get another one if it fell out and I lost it from the club and glue it myself. But um, actually, you know, I, you know, maybe this isn't the case, I don't know. But uh, someone at GEC told me that if they had sent these shields earlier, they could have been pinned. Now, again, I don't know if that's the case at all. They may have just said that offhand. But if that is the case, uh, I'm gonna maybe you know try to get them sent earlier uh, this next year or suggested or whatever, because I do think that it would be a much better collector piece and just to, just in general I would enjoy it more if it was uh, a pin shield rather than a glued shield. So moving on to my rendezvous special. So this is kind of the, the crown of my collection, you might say. Um, this is the only thing that I'm 
sure that I'm going to continue collecting as long as I can. Uh, and it's, it's ones that are kind of tough to get at this point. So these are the specials made for each rendezvous. There's a specific knife made and um, you can only get it at the rendezvous and people wait in line for hours to get them. So this first one is from the first year that I went, 2014, and it is a number 15 TC Barlow with a one hand blade. So the razor one hand, one arm blade. And there were only 30 this year. They've been making more recently, uh, but it is in the sucker rod wood. So um, just like the beagle I showed earlier, this one is a really cool knife. So this is so you can you can catch it on your pants or whatever, and it opens. Um, beautiful knife, really well made. You can still kind of see the edge, but like I say, I did use this knife, um, so the edge is kind of light. But really nice knife, um, and I'm glad that I got one of these in the first year that I was there so that I could start that collection. Um, and really like the, the handles, they look great. And, you know, inexpensive that year actually. So um, just a really cool knife and the first of the rendezvous knives. And, you know, I'm gonna leave this one out. So moving on to the next rendezvous knife put this up here. The 2015 was a number 748212. Again, 30 knives that year. Uh, this is an improved trapper uh, with tortoiseshell acrylic. So a really cool knife. My only tortoiseshell acrylic right now, I have had others, but this is my only one right now. Um, and it's an improved trapper because it's on the 74 frame like the previous one you saw, but uh, has a saber ground clip point, which is really cool. Again, I've used this one for hunting and stuff, so you can't see that edge very well, um, but it's still kind of there. And it has brass bolsters and a brass shield, which again is, is also really cool. Um, and then a really kind of nice stout um, saber ground worn cliff. So a very cool knife, um, again, one that I've used, but a really cool one that I don't really use anymore. Uh, so that's the 2015 Rendezvous knife. Moving on to the 2016. This is the previously mentioned number 74 stainless. And uh, let's see, this, this year they made 47. So kind of a, a strange number of knives, um, but that's how many they made that year. And uh, this one's number 20. I actually almost didn't get this one. Between 2015 and 2016, I think it got a lot busier and more people were there early on. Um, or maybe I just came at the right time on 2014 and 2015, but 2016, I almost didn't get one of these. And Chris Tucker actually helped me out and said that they had one left over. So uh, this primitive bone is really cool. Um, it's very primitive looking and you can see it's pretty uneven. So it's kind of, I like that. It actually is rounded on this side and you can see this side looks quite a bit different. So it feels good in the hand. Like I said, I did use it, uh, but it's the same drop point. This one has a little bit stronger of a pull, but still great action. And you can see this was the 10 year anniversary. So you can see gradation cutlery 2006 to 2016. And they actually did make a pin saying 10 years and that I think is the only reference to being at the being the 10th year anniversary um, so that's pretty cool uh, there's the the pin that goes with it 2016 rendezvous special and I don't think either of those had pins but this one did and a really nice knife one that I kind of like I say missed using after I decided to stop using the rendezvous specials um, as you can see, super nice action. So that's why I got that um, one special, I'm sorry, special factory assembly uh, from this year's rendezvous. Oh, I guess I didn't mean to put that away. Uh, to use, because I really like that one, um, but I haven't used it yet. So anyway, moving on to 2017. So 2017 was, uh, they did make 50 in 2017. Um, this one, is a number three eight so the 38 special one one seventeen uh in lvs paula i don't know how you say that abalone so this isn't the alvs this is lvs so there's abalone throughout it's not looking glass it's not a sheet and then an acrylic veneer it's um 
abalone throughout. I didn't use this one, but the etch is kind of light, um, just from, you know, keeping it nice and polished and stuff, but annual rendezvous there, etch. Um, kind of a, not a pattern that I was super into when they first came out. I actually didn't get one from the normal run, but it's a nice knife. Um, actually sits well in the handle um, and would be nice to use. Uh, just a nice little um, easy to carry knife. Uh, but I haven't used it. Um, this is kind of when I stopped. I decided to not use the rendezvous specials, but I really like abalone as you can probably start to tell. Um, and this one has really nice abalone. It actually, I sent it in to GEC because it started to have some bubbling in the handle, uh, which I, I'm not sure what it was. They kind of seemed to think it was from using mineral oil, but to be honest, to be frank, that doesn't really make that much sense chemically. Um, I think it was just trapped moisture or air in the abalone itself. But either way, it's fixed now and hasn't come back. Um, so another example of Gradation Cutlery's warranty um, being really... Uh, great service and good warranty. So there's 2017, and it also had, well, the knife didn't have a pin, but the rendezvous had a pin. As far as I know, the knife didn't have a pin. And then moving on to 2018, another whaler. So this is, uh, they again made 50. It's a number 462218 whaler uh, with a whale shield, which is really cool and oily heart pine bone with a story inside. Bill was really proud of this, uh, I'm sorry, not bone, uh, wood. Um, Bill was really proud of this wood, so I'm gonna show you the story also and you can pause it to, to read that. Uh, let me get the knife out. Again, it came with both the rendezvous shield, actually the, um, sorry, pin. They give these to you whether you get the knife or not, the, the rendezvous pin, but here's the, the knife pin, so a cool pin. Um, and then here is the story. So if, this wood on this is very historic and um, hopefully you'll be able to pause it to read it here. Um, but basically it came from an old factory uh, where they made rope for, um, you know, boats. Uh, so pretty cool. I always like, I mean, one of the reasons I like these traditional knives is because of the history behind them. So it's always great when GEC adds more history to them, um, like with the sucker rod wood handle and this. And this shield is really great. Uh, again, Randy from GEC, the engineer, said it was uh, tough to get this mouth wide open like that. So that's pretty cool. Um, the, the wood is really interesting. It's different looking than any other wood I've seen. And there were some big variations in how it looked on different people's uh, versions of this knife. Some people had a lot of this really strong striation and you know, some people didn't. Mine, you know, you can see it's kind of light at the pins. I, I don't know if that's from the spinning of the pins or what, but it's a very hefty knife. Um, it's satin bolsters. This one's a little tight, to be honest. Um, you can see, I haven't used this one at all. Um, uh, it has the etch and um, we'll see how it is right now, but the pen blade, yeah, it's really, really strong. So I thought about seeing if they would fix it, but, or make it lighter, but I don't know, maybe I'll email them and see. Um, but it's really tough to open, but I don't use it, so it's not a huge deal. You can hear that it has definitely a, a bear trap spring. And moving on to the 2019, this year's and the last knife here. So uh, it looks like it's gonna, be just under an hour of GECs, so I hope you like GECs as much as I do. This is the um, number 128119, so this is a powder horn. Uh, 50 knives, or no, it's a toothpick. I don't know what the difference between the toothpick and the powder horn is. The powder horn might have had a different blade shape combination, but this again is an LVS abalone. So they, they use kind of fancy handle materials like abalone relatively often on these rendezvous specials. You'll notice that this one is signed by Joan May Howard rather than Chris Tucker. Chris Tucker was a really nice woman. Um, like I said, helped me several times with warranty stuff and, you know, getting knives and things like that. And was always, you know, willing to talk to you and explain things and everything. Um, unfortunately, she had to, uh, you know, stop working at GEC um, due to some, I think, health issues. So that was, you know, she was a big part of GEC. And, uh, you know, I kind of got to know her from being at the rendezvous, not, not a lot, but um, just she was a good good person to have at GEC, I think. So, um, but Joan May Howard is, is uh, kind of taking over as the 
main salesperson, uh, sales representative, and uh, she was also very helpful, very nice, and um, you know, easy to talk to at the rendezvous this year. So, I think that's you know going to be a, a good transition. Uh, but anyway, here's the knife. I'll get the pins out. So, I've noticed that they I have started putting these in here. I don't. They weren't putting these in before, but these are you know, just to keep the moisture out. But Anyway, here is the 2019 Rendezvous pin, and then the 2019 Rendezvous special knife pin. So I'll put this over here, and here's the knife. So this is another one that, uh, when they did these these two number 12s recently, I, I just didn't buy one. I wasn't really buying knives at that time, and I wasn't super into them, um, but I like it. It's somewhat similar to the 38, and that it has this kind of same shape to it with a larger end at the at the um where the blade comes out and then a smaller end down here it has these kind of cool um bolsters that do kind of look like a powder horn and then another long kind of turkish style clip point so a cool knife and again i really like abalone um so really nice abalone on this one lots of different color um as you can see purples greens blues and everything uh, so another really cool knife and that pretty much uh, is my, my GEC collection. Um, as you can tell from how long the video is and how many knives are shown, I'm a big fan of GEC. I think they're making the best production pocket knives right now, uh, anywhere, but definitely in America. Um, and I think that they, you know, the people behind them, Bill Howard, um, William Howard, the, you know, his son, and, and who's kind of taking the reins are doing a great job. And I'm, I'm happy that it's in Pennsylvania here where, where I live and is continuing the tradition of knife making cutlery business in Pennsylvania, in Titusville specifically, whereas I've mentioned, unfortunately, Queen went out of business a couple years ago. Uh, so I think it's a great thing that GEC is doing so well, is becoming and has become so popular and for good reason. Um, lots and lots of good knives you've seen just in my collection. And although certainly I'm not downplaying the fact that I collect the knives, um, some people have a huge, huge collections. So I hope you've enjoyed my collection, but don't forget there are lots of people out there with more experience um, in GEC knives and knives in general than I have uh, and, and you know, more knowledge on collecting and things like that. So, you know, certainly I enjoy sharing my knowledge. Uh, that's why I've started knifethoughts.com where I write my articles and stuff, why I make these videos that, you know, can, um, be pretty long like this, uh, but um, certainly if you're interested in these knives, call GEC, talk to them. They're happy to help. Um, you can go on blade forums. Like I said, there's lots of great information on there. Darren Orwell has started that um, production database, which is a great resource. And there's a book also um, that if you buy two knives or more at GEC at the factory, they give you, um, but you can also get elsewhere, I believe. Uh, has lots of great information so just look you know if you're looking to learn more about collecting gradation cutlery look online call them and if you have questions for me you know go on knife thoughts and you know enter it into the to the contact form there i'm happy to help or contact me on uh instagram or facebook at knife thoughts and uh you know like i say don't forget to subscribe here for updates when I post new videos. Uh, if you've watched this, for, this far in this video, I think you must like GEC knives just like I do, but I hope you've enjoyed the video. Uh, and don't forget, as always, to go out and do good.